Previously on Versus, the Enterprise D finds itself lost in a region we know as a remote system of the Galactic Empire. The Chimera, under the command of Grand Admiral Swan, goes to investigate a disturbance in, the impu in an Imperial sensor net that was set, set off by the Enterprise. When the Chimera arrives, Swan contacts the Enterprise to find out more about them to know a potential enemy. There, he requests to meet with Captain Picard in person. Swan's shuttle docks with the Enterprise at a docking port near the main shuttle bay, as his shuttle is too tall for the Enterprise's shuttle bay. Swan, with his aide and two guards, board the Enterprise once given the OK by Dr. Crusher. Now, a little, now the conversation between Captain Picard and, uh, and Swan once Swan has boarded the Enterprise. Picard. Welcome aboard the Enterprise, Admiral Swan. Swan, thank you, Captain. Picard, may I introduce you to Counselor Troy, Commander Data, my Security Chief, Commander Wolf, and Dr. Crusher. My First Officer, Commander Riker, will be joining us in the conference room. Swan, excellent. This is my aide, Commander Tovan, and my guards, Troopers TK1313 and TX1123. Picard, no names, just numbers, so on. They do have names, but when they are in their armor, they are only known by their de designations. Shall we be on our way, Picard? We will. Data will show you to the conference room. I will be there shortly. Data and both escort Swan and his men to the conference room as Captain Picard converses with Counselor Troy and Dr. Crusher. Picard, what do you make of them, Dr. Crusher? Commander Tovin and the guards are, are human by all accounts, and in excellent health. How humans got here, I really don't know. Picard. Fascinating. Counselor? Troy. I sense very little from the guards. It is almost like they have been trained to have no emotion, though they did seem to love their empire. Commander Tovin was much more transparent. She seemed curious intrigued, and intrigued by us, but still cautious. As for Swan, he seemed calm and collected, but it was hard to get a sense of him beyond that, though I sense no ill attention for him or Tovan. Picard, the guards? Troy. My best guess is that they will not have ill attentions till their leaders do. Picard. That is better than nothing. Commander Riker, meet us in the conference room. Stay at Yellow Riker. Yes, sir. So, back on the bridge of the Chimera, a transmission is received from Grand Moff Tarkin asking to speak with the Grand Admiral. Tarkin, where is Grand Admiral Swan? Farrell, he is not here, Grand Moff. He went on board the alien ship. Tarkin, why? Farrell, he wanted to investigate them and learn more about them. Tarkin, very well, but have Swan contact me once he returns to the ship. Farrell, yes, Grand Moff, and transmission. Back aboard the Enterprise, Swan and Picard engage in a lengthy conversation about the region of space the Enterprise is in. Swan, however, refrains from providing too much information in regard to the Empire and strength and anything else that could be detrimental to the Empire. Picard, on the other hand, is almost too eager to share information about the Enterprise and the United Federation of P Planets. The Empire was not the only one who detected the Enterprise's presence. The, Reb 
The rebels of Phoenix Squadron picked up the Enterprise on census, and the ghost was sent to investigate with Captain Harrison Dura, Zeb, Captain Rex, and Carlos on board. For those who don't know, Sabine, Ezra, Ken, and Chopper were on Mando at this time. The ghost slipped into the system, avoiding impure detection, and Hera makes contact with the Enterprise shortly after Picard left the bridge. Riker answered the hail and patched her through to Picard. Picard decided that he and a few others will beam over to the ghost after he finishes his conversation with Thrawn. After nearly two hours of talking with Thrawn, Picard offers him a tour of, en of the Enterprise, which Thrawn accept accepts. Picard tells Thrawn that Commander Riker and Wolf will conduct the tour as he has some duties to attend to. As soon as Thrawn and his men leave the room with Riker and Wolf, Picard tells Data and Troy to accompany him over to another ship that the Enterprise has made contact with. Picard, Troy, and Data beam over to the ghost and meet with Captain Harris Sindula. There he discovers what Thrawn would not tell him about the Empire, and learns about the ghost crew's previous encounters with Thrawn and how he had nearly destroyed their rebel cell at the Battle of Athlon and that Thrawn would not that Swan should not be underestimated. However, the Camille was able to detect the Enterprise's transport and was able to inform the Grand Admiral about it. Once the once it was figured out what was going on, Swan ordered his forces to await his return before doing anything. Swan then told Commander Riker that something had come up and he needed to return to his ship immediately. When Swan had boarded his shuttle, Riker contacted Picard. Captain, Swan has left the Enterprise and is heading towards his ship. Picard responded, prepare to go to Red Alert Commander, have the transporter lock on all life forms aboard this vessel. With Riker responding, yes Captain. Shortly on the Chimera, Swan informs Tarkin of what he discovered about the Enterprise and that he believes the Empire should make all efforts to capture the ship intact so that the technology could be reverse engineered, to which Tarkin agrees. Thrawn then orders all turbulators to lock, target, uh, lock targets on the ghost and destroy it before turning to target the Enterprise. Back on the Enterprise. Riker. Captain, they're targeting the ghost. Picard, beam us out of here right now. Sindula, I am not abandoning my ship. Picard, you may not have a choice. The first volley of turbulator fire strikes the ghost. Zeb, Hero, the shields are down. Sindula, fine, but I'm taking the Phantom Chew out of here. The ghost is destroyed by turbulator fire as Picard, Data, and Troy beam back. Out of the blast flies the Phantom Chew towards the Enterprise. It lands in the shuttle bay just as the Enterprise receives a hail from the Chimera. Thrawn. Captain Picard, I am providing you with one chance to surrender your vessel and crew to the Galactic Empire or be destroyed. Picard, we will never surrender. Thrawn, very well, Captain. See you in battle. Thrawn ends the transmission and Picard orders the Enterprise to red alert. Thrawn orders all turbulators to fire upon the Enterprise to drain its shields. After a a single volley of turbulator fire, Wolf informs Picard that the shields are at 75%. Picard orders Wolf, Wolf to return fire. Once the Enterprise begins evasive action, the Chimera's turbulators and iron cans can no longer accurately target the Enterprise, so Thrawn orders the Chimera to launch its TIE fighters in order to disable the Enterprise's engines, which Thrawn learned where they were in the which Swan learned where they needed to target to to disable the the engines from his tour of the Enterprise. However, the Enterprise's targeting system were able to target and successfully destroy and or disable every single TIE fighter that the um, that the Camille had, including the Zamba class shuttle that Swan sent out once the TIE fighters were severely depleted in numbers. 
This forces Swan to engage. This forces Swan to order the Chimera to engage in in evasive maneuvers that computer star destroyers are not suited or designed for. Eventually, after nearly an hour, this both ships' shields are de are depleted. Swan hails the Enterprise and requests a ceasefire, to which Picard grants. Swan uses his time to repair his shields and to order the rest of his fleet to come to his coordinates to assist in, ca in capturing the Enterprise. The Enterprise also takes advantage of this time to replenish their shields and to analyze what they discovered about the Chimera. So thank you for watching this video. Where I've ended it may seem a bit anticlimactic, but I believe that even Swan could not defeat the Enterprise with only a single Imperial One class Star Destroyer at his disposal. I find the Enterprise to be much too maneuverable and the computers aboard the Enterprise and its assisting in targeting is makes their weapons m m too precise in battle when compared to the Imperial targeting systems. Just much more precise. And and that phases, uh, in my opinion, are capable, are equally capable of taking down ties and combat and targeting capital ships. This battle is a draw. If you express interest in the comments, I will consider making a part three to the story that I have set up. You can uh, make suggestions as to what you would like to see in the comments as as well. And I will consider all suggestions. Also, I want to state that in, uh, in part one, I accidentally said the Enterprise is about one third the size of, excuse me, of a Imperial Star Destroyer. That is incorrect. It's not one third the size of an Imperial class Star Destroyer. Closer to one third the size of a Victory, though in that case, might be more close to a half. I was mistaken there and I just want to let you know about that. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel for future versus content content. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support there will help me to be able to divert more time into creating excellent YouTube videos. And as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. Have a good one.